Sunshine is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Gary Hammond. And this is It's Movie Time. Now, Gary, I've asked you to be my guest today for a couple of reasons. First of all, your sonorous voice, <laughs> your wit, but after all, you are an accomplished attorney. And also because I think you might be a, maybe a decade away from actually being immersed in Elvis. That's fair. I was born in 51, and I, Elvis, I missed him. I didn't see him on Ed Sullivan. Right. I didn't see any of that. I remember going to a movie with my two older sisters. So when I was 10, they would have been 13 and 15. And I don't, oh. I don't know that. I looked at the movies, and Elvis had a movie in 63, and Hard Day's Night was in 64. <laughs> and I couldn't, I wasn't really sure, but I figured out over time, I actually, I, I, I remember going to Hard Day's Night. I remember, it must have been an Elvis movie. I think I was the only male in the theater. It was a huge theater in downtown Youngstown, Ohio. I was sitting with my sisters, and I couldn't hear anything but screaming from the beginning of the movie until the end, and my ears were ringing. Well, how about your sisters? Did they go wild? I don't remember that. Okay. I just remember being overwhelmed. It was like a wave of sound that was coming over me from both front and back. I think my younger sister did. Uh, what I like so much about um, Baz Luhrmann's new Elvis, and that's really what we're talking about here, his biopic of Elvis Presley, uh, is the energy that he created in wherever he was, and that young women responded to him not only sexually, which of course we know was the big problem with Elvis, at least with elders, uh, but mostly because I think he was so different from anybody else, any other performer. I think he uh, released other performers to use their entire bodies to express themselves. I, I don't know what it is, and obviously he's, he's unique. That's true, but then in, this, in, the, in the scenes of the early music, it, it wasn't unique because the black artists were doing that. They had Little Richard, uh, they had, uh, oh, I forget the, uh, but B. they had B. B. King, well, yeah, B.B. King, it. but they had a woman singing Hound Dog, and speaking of Hound oh, Dog, right. they, they, uh, they said you were, you said you were high class, but that was just a lie. Elvis was first class, for sure, and he was in the first class of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986, before the building oh, look was constructed. At you. He was in the first class, along with Little Richard, Buddy Holly, and others, and so he was. And I'm wearing my Rock and Roll Hall of Fame hat. I'll take it off now that you've had the opportunity to see it. <laughs> and, and there you go. Another reason why I asked you here is that you do your homework. Boy, oh boy, that is so true. Um, yes, and, and I guess really what I want to refine my comment by saying for us white folk, this is, this is a really an exceptional experience. Yes. And, and Baz Luhrmann, you're very careful about showing his affinity for black artists. Right. And, right, um, and he had a refuge there. When he was, when he hit a trouble spot, he got away from it all, and he went downtown Memphis and went into the club with BB King and stayed for the after party and was just part of that world. And he brought that world, and it showed him early in Memphis that he was um, was criticized by his by whites for his affinity for the black yes. community and the music. So in a sense, he's he's right in the civil rights movement. Yep, uh, without knowing it. Uh, what I like about uh, Austin Butler's performance is it seems to be pretty natural to me. That is, his interpretation of Elvis is far away from being an imitation. Right. I would agree with that. Yeah. Wow. It, it wasn't trying. I, I was the only one I remember. The only Elvis uh, impersonation movie that I remember is Kurt Russell, and it seemed like it mm. was an impersonation. No criticism of Kurt Russell. Yeah. But Butler was just natural in the role. Um, he didn't seem like he was, he wasn't doing a bit. He was, no, he was, right. he was good acting, yeah, yeah, was good. and he was and, himself. And he looks great, doesn't yeah. look exactly like Elvis, but who wants it, right? <laughs> but he's got either a really healthy head of hair or a great wig. I can't tell which, but it looks well, good. We see Samuel Jackson with great hair in movies, so we know anything <laughs> is possible. I, I know, I know you're right. Uh, Baz Luhrmann, have you seen anything else of his? Not that I recall. Okay, so I, my, one of my favorite all-time musicals is uh, Moulin Rouge. Okay. And that's with Nicole Kidman, 
uh, and a superior, probably around 2000, somewhere around there, a superior modernization of the musical. And Lerman, of course, is not, he doesn't have a shot that he can't gussy up with the camera and color and I mean... <laughs> the cinematography was fantastic in this movie and, and uh, very artful. The colors were very dramatic and there, there would be the contrast between his pink suit and the dark nightclub with the dark people. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, uh, I was thinking, and in fact, I think I told somebody they didn't even reprise the Ed Sullivan bit, but they did have the dog. Did he have the dog on the stage at Ed Sullivan? He did. Okay, so they had the hound dog there. Yeah, he was singing to a hound dog. Oh, I saw man. a picture of it in doing my research. So. <laughs> and it is so <laughs> distracting. I mean, you have this dog there, yeah, I get it, isn't that cute? But here you have one of the world's most famous, influential artists singing to a f hound dog. Yes, <laughs> and he said it was humiliating. And the, Did the, he? Yeah. 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 Well, in the movie he said it. And yeah. In, okay. And in my research, he said it was humiliating as well. And the band were quite upset that he had fallen to that level. And that I think inspired his rebellion during his comeback, comeback Christmas special. Oh yes, remember <laughs> he wouldn't even wear the shirt. He wouldn't no. even wear it. Talk about an ugly Christmas sweater, that was... <laughs> that a good sweater. Um, so, and sometimes you'll see Tom Hanks' name go first yeah. in promoting this. Right. And that's, of course, unfair to right. Butler, but right. I understand marketing. You know, we all know Tom Hanks. Right. Who knows? Right. Butler, he was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Right. Like, it's, yeah, he, well, he doesn't get top billing, and they're trying to get people to come and see the movie. Yes. And I suspect people will come and see the movie because of Tom Hanks, but Butler was outstanding. Yes, his I His performance, know, yeah. very moving, very powerful. Now, in case people don't know, Tom Hanks plays Colonel, hmm, Colonel Parker. Parker. <laughs> and come to find out, he probably wasn't a colonel. He actually was a colonel in the Louisiana something. Was he, he helped, the state? He, yeah, he kept, he helped a governor... Uh, as he was a publicist, and he helped a governor with his campaign, and so he was made an honorary, yeah. uh, I, I think of Kentucky colonels, apparently there's Louisiana colonels as well. Well, I was a captain in the Vermont militia because I taught it at Norwich University, my first teaching job. Well, I'm surprised you don't go by Captain DeSantis. Yes, and I know it was uh, much to the chagrin of the officers at that point. At that university, that I even had, you know, I even had the 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 captain stripes and and all that in my hair. You can guess was too long yes. at that time, yes. but it was great fun, and I learned so much and met so many good military people. It changed my whole mind. Imagine right. that seventies, right. right? You know, like little punk looking at all the military. Are you kidding? So then I worked with them, and I said I really like these people. Anyway, yeah. So I so good. Thanks for telling me that because. I couldn't figure out where he he got this colonel. Well, and and to, actually, your comment about that, it, it, we went deeper into the personality of Elvis and into the personality of Colonel Parker, uh, and it was not just the surface uh, publicity that we have seen uh, over the years for each of them. Yeah, he he was really a villain, though. What so a Parker villain. was a villain. I mean, if they're <laughs> and even half right about him, and Hanks plays him. I'm ambivalent about Hank's uh, portrayal on this one. I, I'm distracted by the fat suit and the prosthetics. Okay, because, and I'm wondering if that's because I know who's underneath it and I'm trying to see that, or, uh, and also because I think he's a one note on this. Uh, he is, I think Parker was one note. He was a, he was a villain. And I kept, I thought that the, I thought the fat suit was amazing, that the makeup was amazing. I didn't find it distracting, I just, because I was impressed by the craft as far as that right. goes and that he would be able to pull that off because there is no scene. There is I know, no... I know, I know, I know. Anything. I know. That this is, how about finding out how Parker made his money on this? Which to me is a sign that, that Elvis needed an education badly. Well, he needed an education, but the, 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 the contract signing scene where he makes certain appeals to the mother and the father, which end up sealing the deal and screwing Elvis for decades. <laughs> as far as that goes, it shows that Parker had manipulated these, all of these people into doing what he wanted to do. And in, in fact, the whole, the whole movie is about Parker's manipulation and Elvis's struggle to get yes, free of that. It's actually a, a bold move on Baz Luhrmann's part to make the point of view mostly 
from Parker. Right. Not all, but mostly. And so that would be an odd way of taking it. It seems to work out well. Uh, none of us is fooled by his attempt to burnish his image. Parker. Oh, I agree <laughs> with that. Um, <laughs> grasping at straws is what he was doing throughout, <laughs> as far as that goes, to try and make himself look good. The, the reality is, though, that he did make Elvis. Would Elvis have been a brilliant success? have been a brilliant success without Parker. And he has a, a talent to be, but who knows? That's a great point. No, Gary Hammond, we're, we're running out of time for his movie time. So what would you advise our audience? I would encourage uh, everyone to go see this movie. I think that people that, had, that, didn't, that are not as old as I <laughs> and didn't grow up with the Elvis mystique uh, will have an appreciation for the acting in this movie and the music in this movie and the fact that he was uh, in the first class that was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, should remind everybody that he was there at the beginning and in fact he was uh, in all likelihood the beginning. Let's call him the king. Let's.